The Q bar component is particularly awesome for things like Electron apps. In fact, Visual Studio Code is kind of like a hybrid Electron app, and this bar at the top here, you could almost think of that as a Q bar component. So that's what we're going to play around with. In fact, for the start of this video, how about we just replace this component with a Q bar component and imagine that we're building an Electron app. So we'll jump into the main layout and instead of a Q toolbar here, I'll select all of that, get rid of it, and let's just test if that works. Yep, it's gone. And we'll change it to a Q dash bar component. Now, notice that the background of it is blue. That's because we're sitting inside of the Q header component. By default, it's actually going to have this kind of more grayish color. But since we put it in the header component, uh, this gives us some white text and also sets the background to our primary color. Just thought I'd point that out. All right, let's have a play around with this. First of all, I wanna add in there some buttons. We're going to try and make this look similar to the bar on a Mac computer. So let's say Q dash button. And you know how they got those little circle buttons there? We can mimic that with an icon that is equal to lens. All right, so to, by default, it's not gonna look like much. We'll have to style this a little bit further. We'll also make it flat and round. And how about we give it a size equal to 8.5 pixels. I'm totally stealing this from the docs, by the way. So feel free to check out the docs to get a little bit more on this. And we'll set the color equal to red. How about that? And there we go. We got that close button. So now I can just copy paste this down. And if you really wanted, you could turn it into its own component. And let's make the next one yellow and then the next one green. And there we go. It's literally that easy to basically mimic the top bar on a Mac computer. How about the title of our application? Well, we can come down here and add a div and then just put our title in there, my app, save it. And there we go, we've got a title but you probably want that to be centered. So let's see how we do that. We can say the class is equal to a column. And that basically is saying, I want you to take up all of the space here. I want that div to take up all the space. And then we can say text dash center. And there we go. Another thing you could do is say, for example, text dash weight dash bold, just to bolden that a little bit more. Okay, what else can we do? Well, let's imagine that we wanna have a close button here. So let's say Q dash button. Actually, you know what? Let's just steal everything here. We'll paste that down and we'll get rid of some of this styling here, like the color and just change the icon to close. I think that's all we'll have to do. And there we go. We've got a close button. Another thing worth pointing out is if we don't have this app title section here, now the button's gonna show all the way over on this side. So how do we get that close button to show over here? Well, we can use Q dash space for that. Save it. And there we go. It just puts space between those components. This is a really, really awesome component. I use it all the time. There's so many situations where it's good to know about it. So there you go. You might also want this to look like an Android app. So in that case, you could simply add in here, dense. And then when you're on a phone application, it's just gonna fit more nicely. And then you wouldn't have a close button here. In that case, you might have, for example, a Bluetooth button or something that shows you whether or not the internet's connected, stuff like that. Another reason you might wanna use this is within your dialogue. So if you have a dialogue, in fact, let's go to index.view and do a dialogue, Q dash dialogue, and we'll add a Q dash card in there and then a Q dash card dash section. And then if I type in lorem and press tab, I get some lorem ipsum and now, just to simulate this, let's say model dash values equal to true, makes it a bit easy to work with. So that just shows by default. Now, the way I often do this is I'll add a Q dash toolbar and then give that a class with a background color equal to something like primary. All right, so this is one way to get a toolbar in there. However, that might be a little bit too thick for you. You might want something a bit thinner so you can just use the Q bar instead. And there we go. Now let's make this a fuller example and imagine we've got a title in there. So this could be, for example, more info, more info. And there we go. You might want the text for that to be white. So let's say text white. And then, like I mentioned before, you then say Q dash space to create some space between this div and the Q button component. 
which is going to have an icon equal to close. And we'll have to add all that styling in again. Flat, round, how's that? Nice, I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe we'll get rid of round there. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, and we'll probably just make it dense as well. All right, and then of course we wanna make it so that when you click on this button, it closes the dialogue. So we can say V dash close dash pop up. Super, super simple using Quasar and boom, it's gone. So that's about it for this one. But there are two little things that I wanted to point out. First of all, there are common situations where you might wanna have something that is draggable. Like you want, might wanna have a draggable window. And this is particularly useful if you have the kind of dialogue that is seamless. So if you add the seamless attribute to a dialogue, then you can still interact with the page whilst that dialogue is visible. So in that case, you might also wanna make it so that when you click and drag on the title bar, it drags that dialogue window. And so if you take a look at the documentation for the floating action button, at the very bottom of the page, it gives an example of how you can do this. So in that scenario, you might just wanna look at this code and basically mimic that functionality for your dialogue if you want to have a draggable dialogue. Now, the other thing you might wanna know is how do I do this with an Electron application? So how do I make it so that I can have a frameless application and basically rebuild that top bar myself so that it more closely fits the style of my application? In fact, that's what VS Code has done here. They've basically hijacked this top bar and built it the way they want it to look. So you can do the same thing by making yours frameless following the documentation here. Really, really cool. They even show you how to make it so that when you click on the close, uh, the expand and the minus button, how to get that all working as well when you're building an Electron application. So definitely go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Oh, and they even show you window dragging. Quasar has some really interesting ways of solving this problem so that when you click drag the window, even in an Electron application, it's going to work really, really nice. All right, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.